Hi guys, today's short video is all about how to keep warm when you're skiing on the slopes. Now I know many people who start skiing uh, often get very cold hands, very cold feet and generally their body is very very cold so they have to stop skiing for the day. And what's the fun in that when you're on a ski holiday? So this short video should contain some hints, tips and I'll go through my complete dress attire to give you my best tips for keeping as warm as possible. So, without further ado, I shall do my best Bruce Almighty impression and get down to the base layers, arguably the most important layer of all your ski outfit. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, so here we go. So, to start from the bottom, uh, these are some simple, not too thick uh, ski socks. A lot of people make the mistake of wearing really thick socks, thinking it'll keep the feet warm, and it won't. Uh, some people wear two pairs of socks with inside the ski boot. That won't work either. So just use one um, thin pair of ski socks, you should be fine. So there you go, both feet. Um, the underwear is actually quite important as well. So a lot of people will wear just basic underwear. And if you're going quite quick down the slope, and you have breathable salopettes, which I'll show you in a moment, that area can actually get quite cold. So, if you have any sort of thermal underwear that you can bring, then that's brilliant, wear that, and that's a good start. For the top half, I always wear merino wool base layers, so uh, the one I'm wearing here is a Heli Hansen top, um, but you can get them from Kathmandu, you can get them cheaply, I think, from Marks and Spencers. Any good outdoor store will have good um, merino wool base layers. So, um, the only other item to add to this, that if it does get very, very cold, you would want to uh, have a pair of thermal leggings in your bag or on your person. And aren't they just the sexiest things? Now these are really important for if it's really, really cold and really, really windy uh, on certain days. And if it is like that, particularly when you're actually sat on the chairlift and you're static, you're not actually moving, the wind can really get up and make you very chilly indeed. So these are quite important. If you don't wear them at the start of the day, I would certainly keep them in your bag so you have them to hand as an option for later on. Okay, next up, mid layers. Okay, so for mid layers, um, there are just two items to walk through. Uh, most importantly is salopettes. So these are uh, my Trespass salopettes that I bought a few years ago. Uh, the only thing to note about the Trespass salopettes is they need to be windproof, uh, they need to be breathable, and they need to be waterproof. And if you get that and you get a good fit from a pair, you basically can't go wrong. So that's the salopettes. And the top half, I normally take a couple of breathable fleeces. Uh, this is a, a Paramo pull-on, but you can get them from the North Face or Berghaus. Uh, any good outdoor shop will, will do them as well. And you can get them for about £40, I think, something like that. Uh, but these are good. So I take a couple to wear during the week and swap about halfway through, because if you don't do any washing, they can get a little bit smelly. And what then happens is your base layers will then wick away moisture and sweat from your body. It will then pass through your breathable salopettes and this layer and spell the moisture outwards, uh, which is good. So that is your mid layers. Next up, the all important top layers. Okay, so top layers, here we go. So. Um, a ski jacket, of course, is important, and the same rules apply as a salopet. So it has to be windproof, it has to be breathable, and it has to be waterproof. Um, the jacket I use isn't actually a ski jacket, it's just generally an outdoors jacket. This is Paramo as well. Uh, as you can see, the zip is exposed, but it, it does what it needs to do for, for me. Um, but you can get a good ski jacket anywhere. Um, in terms of the head, I usually wear a helmet, uh, it's still in the loft, I need, that's the final thing I need to get out for my packing list tomorrow. Um, so I normally wear a helmet and that has a little bit of padding in it, it acts, like a, acts like a hat and it has a vent as well. If my head gets too hot I can open the vent. Um, but if you do wear a hat or, or even a liner under the hat then that's covered. Um, in terms of gloves, uh, my recommendation is to, if you do get generally very cold hands, is to wear a pair of liner gloves. So um, these are merino liner gloves, but they also have um, a nice sort of finger and thumb patch. I don't know if you can see that or not, but basically allows you to use your phone um, when you're outside in the cold. So what I normally do is I'll wear my normal ski gloves 
and like so. Uh, so gloves I use for my main ski glove are called seal skins, and again, uh, same rules, uh, breathable, windproof, and uh, waterproof. The reason I like these is you always carry um, skis around in in the little palm bit there, and these have a very robust sort of leather uh, stitching area, which means they don't fray or come apart easily. And if you don't have that in your gloves and you ski a lot, uh, you'll have to replace your gloves quite often. Um, and the good things about these is they have a little loop, so you put your hand around the loop to start with, and then when you want to take them off on a chairlift, you don't lose them; they just sort of dangle down. And uh, your hand doesn't get cold because you're wearing the liner gloves. And then all that's left is one other small addition. So the other base layer that I sometimes wear, and this looks like you are some sort of mass murderer, so I apologize, but it is a very useful bit of kit. And this is a neoprene face mask. So if this is this for when you're very, very high up and the wind is very, very strong, and you can sometimes barely breathe when you're at the top, so, <laughs> views or otherwise. So this goes on to your head like this. And just sits uh, there like so, and it works around the helmet and your goggles. And you can see the little, I don't know if I've come closer, but you can see the little nose hole and some uh, areas to breathe through here. So it is actually okay, it's quite comfortable, even though it doesn't look particularly attractive. And then last but not least is your goggles. So, my new ski goggles for this season are these pretty amazing uh, Sun God Revolt ski goggles. Um, I need to test them on the slopes, so no better place to start than on the slopes themselves. My last few tips for keeping warm when on the slopes. Number one, always have a hip flask with you. Mine's in my bag and it's a little tipple in the late morning or Early, who am I kidding, late morning, yeah, in the afternoon when you uh, cool down a little bit. But two, uh, normally if you take Maribar for example, one side of the valley gets the sun in the morning and the other side gets the sun in the afternoon. So if you plan it right and you always ski in the sun, you're likely to be warmer than you would be normally. And number three, you can always pop into any little mountain restaurant and warm up with a nice fan show or a nice hot chocolate. So there you go, there's my tips for keeping warm on the piste.